Welcome back to another episode of Rediscovering the Saints Together. Today we look at Saint Ralph. So let us pray and ask the Lord to help us journey with Ralph along this road to salvation. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, you have given us another saint in our life that we may journey with him to find Jesus and enter your kingdom. We pray that during this journey, our hearts and our minds will be open and focus on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And today we have Sabri, who will lead us in reading and help us to journey with our Lord through Ralph. Sabri? Love of learning. It is impossible to divide love. True love knows only how to multiply. When my first child, Walter, was born, I was filled with an immense love. I never knew I would love anyone that much. But then Isabel came along, and I was once again filled with that immense love. I instantly had as much love for her as I did for her older brother. Having more children expands the love of a father and a mother. It doesn't divide it. Where did all that extra love come from? In a way, with each child that God has blessed us with, the love in my heart has increased infinitely. It's hard to describe. You love them all differently, yet with the same intensity. And loving them all differently expands the way you love others. My eyes fill with tears just thinking and writing about it. I now know what it means to love so much it hurts. My father used to tell my brothers and me that we were his treasure, but it wasn't until I had my own children that I really understood what he meant and how much he loved us. <coughs> Ralph Bernard is our fourth <coughs> child and was named after my wife's maternal grandfather and father. He shares his middle name not only with my father, but also with my eldest brother, Mark, who was killed in a car accident years before Ralph was born. Ralph was born on Mark's birthday, a poignant reminder of the circle of life. St. Ralph was a Benedictine bishop in the 9th century, known for his leadership and love of learning. Love of learning is one of the quintessential life skills. When we go for parent-teacher conferences, there is one thing I always say to our children's teachers. I don't care if my child is first in class or last in the class. I am more interested in helping them to develop a love for learning. If they love learning, they will learn every day for the rest of their lives, and they will live rich and full lives. At times, it seems that modern education is a form of brutality. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus quotes Isaiah, He will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick. Matthew 12, verse 20. To educate children requires strength, but it also requires gentleness. Their little souls need to be handled with care. We are all different, and we all develop at different speeds. We all have different gifts, and when we try to force all children into the same mold, it bruises their little spirits and often kills their love of learning. My precious Ralph has a beautiful curiosity. As with his brothers and sisters, it emerged quite naturally. Now the challenge we have as parents is to patiently nurture it. Patience is one of the greatest lessons the saints teach us. They strove to be patient in all things, which reminds us that patience is one of the foundational virtues. How patient were you today? Of course, most of the saints didn't have toddlers to raise, and children have a unique ability to test the very extremes of your patience. We are called to be patient with others, as well as with ourselves. One of the areas we most need to be patient with ourselves is in regard to our spiritual development. It is so easy to become discouraged. Continuous learning plays a very important role in reminding us to be patient with ourselves and helping us grow in new and exciting ways spiritually. 
The saints were continuously learning. They loved learning about God and the scriptures, discovering the person he created them to be and growing spiritually. Do you know more about the faith than you did a year ago? How much have you learned about the spiritual life over the past 12 months? Most people are not called to a formal study of the faith, but we are all called to learn a little more each week, month, and year. For years, I have been encouraging people to read five pages of a great spiritual book each day. It is amazing how much we can learn and grow over the course of a year and astounding what we learn over a decade if we read just five pages a day. It has never been more convenient to learn continually about the genius of our faith. Many of the saints never even held a book in their hands. Wow, that's very interesting. Never hold a book in their hand. Some saints were just meant to be. Don't you think so? I think so. Okay, what stimulates your curiosity and desire to learn? I believe that being encouraged stimulates my um, curiosity and desire to learn and things that look fun, things that look welcoming. Okay, and it stimulates you. Yes. So you spend a lot of quality time doing that? Yes, I spend a lot of time using my hands actually because I like to do things practically. I like challenges that encourage me to think more. So over the years, you have learned a lot of more about your faith? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And what is the most interesting thing about the faith that you, you can tell anybody about? I think that one of the most interesting things that I've learned is that even when I condemn myself, God is still there listening to me. Even when I don't think that he's there, my opinion of God does not change who he is. Oh, wonderful. That's exciting. Thank you. Father, what do you think stimulates you or awakens your curiosity? There are so many things that I have to learn about the faith, about my relationship with God. There's so many things that m excites me that I think would excite other people. Part of it is because all my years <clears throat> I've gotten involved in evangelization. And because you bring something to someone or some group of people, things change. And you get more excited about what can you do. And you discover how people react and who they are and what you need to do and what the church is saying that you can do. So you just want to learn more and you want to get involved with more. And the more you get involved, as though it's the Lord telling you, you don't know enough. And especially with this new generation, your generation, oh my word, I don't know how to deal with you guys. <laughs> but now I have to learn. And there are so many things I am learning. And I'm saying, but why did I know that before? Because it was not the time. It was not the generation. Amen. And um, it just had me going all the time. What do you think young people can do to support each other and help enkindle encouragement and curiosity in learning about our faith? What I would say is that they need to spend less time on worldly things. Just learn to know who Jesus is and the wonderful work that Jesus has done in the life of everybody. Learn about the same. Because we are all called to be saints, we are all called to be 
like Jesus. And it brings a liberation in their life and they have to experience that because when they hold on so much to the things of this world, they find as though they're imprisoned and their hearts become heavy and they don't know how to love. They don't know how to cherish things that they have. They get more, a lot more anger and resentment and hatred because that is what they experience in the world. Why not change it around and say, well, what does Jesus have to offer me? And we find that there's a liberation, there's a freedom, there's a happiness, there's a peace in your life. And we can share that with each other. Young people can share that and talk about it with each other and rediscover themselves in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that is what drives me to, to want to tell people and to want to help them to rediscover their life in Jesus. Because remember, we are baptized. We belong to Christ. We don't belong to the world. As the saying goes, this world is not my home. So why do I want to stay here and be stagnant? And not only that, I don't have the energy if I'm in the world. I don't have the energy because what does the world have to offer me? Nothing good but pain and yeah. sorrow. So don't you want something different? You want to have some peace and love and joy and possibly because when I was growing up, we didn't have to worry about so many things in life. Life was so beautiful. You play together, you climb mango tree, you, you were just there having fun. And now I look at the young people, what is the fun they have? Be, 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 on a computer, on a tablet, on a phone. What is the fun? We don't see young people playing in the yard anymore. We don't see them enjoying sports anymore. And if they do, it's about me. And it's about me. And it's about me. It's not about us. And it's not about, could you kick a ball and have fun? Could you throw a ball and have fun? Could you run and play a game in the yard and have fun doing that? Nobody plays anymore. And you walk around the community and everybody's either inside, locked up, afraid. I don't know. Do you think I'm touching a chord of you, of you people, young people in the community now? I think that generally, yes, that is the truth. Because even I, I haven't, to say I played in the yard, it has been years. Uh, I knew long ago we used to bathe in the rain. <laughs> you know, so we don't do that anymore. And your parents, as soon as they get that, come inside, or you're home, come inside, come inside. You know, so we have lost something that is very beautiful. How do we rediscover that? And it's something that we have to think about and young people have to think about, but they don't know what the past was like. And they, all they know now is being inside, watching television, on a computer, sometimes not even doing anything good on the computer, playing games inside. And there's no interaction outside with nature. When last did they go and see a beautiful sunset? Or do they think sunset is beautiful? Or go to some beautiful garden or look at the birds and look at, we have some beautiful hummingbirds around. Have we ever seen the different species of hummingbirds? Maybe we don't see any hummingbirds around. Maybe we don't see, we might see pigeons. Or we see something flying in the sky and we say, oh, I wonder what that is. You know, so there's so much in nature that we need to discover. And even reading about it 
and going to prison. And I wonder how many people know the different beautiful places in Trinidad, historical places. As a child, I used to enjoy when my parents carried me up to the forts and to the parks and San Fernando Hill. Yeah. So that is it. I pray that we all rediscover ourselves in Jesus. Yes, that's a good thing. Thank you. So, dear parishioners, let us ask ourselves the question, what stimulates your curiosity and desire to learn? There must be something, not only because you want to get an education and go to university, but there's also an education that we need to learn, starting from what is the most beautiful thing in our community and what can we do to really learn about our history and our life that will send us into this beautiful place, even more about our religion to find Jesus and to know what Jesus wants of us. It's a learning experience. God bless you and let us think about it and let us pray to the Lord, asking the Lord for his gift of the Holy Spirit to enlighten us. God our Father, there's so much we need to learn about our faith, about you, about the kingdom of heaven, about the word of God. Could we spend some time because we want to build a relationship with you? We want to build a relationship with our brothers and sisters. We want to build our church and to spread the good news. We all have the ability to do it, but we have to stop saying, I don't know. And now we say, yes, I know, because I have been taught by the greatest teacher, Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. And so we thank you and we ask your blessing upon us in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us tomorrow for another episode of Rediscovering the Saints Together as we speak of James.